Rising yields on corporate debt and the freeze up in bank lending since March have led to a surge in private credit. Prequin reporting the market sits at more than a trillion and a half dollars, bigger than a high yield debt, I've heard, could grow by another $700 billion over the next four years as well. But with booming business also comes bigger risks. S&P ran an analysis to gauge borrower resiliency and found that at the current base rate of five and a half percent, less than half of the 2000 businesses surveyed would generate positive cash flow if their earnings dropped by as little as 10 percent. They also identified most vulnerable sectors as technology, software and services. But my next guest says software is where he's seeing opportunities. Joining me now for more is David N. Miller. He's head of global private credit and equity at Morgan Stanley. Welcome to you. A, you. a big job, a much bigger job even than I'm sure when you began seven years ago. Are you surprised at the growth of this industry or do, do, would you have said, yeah, this makes sense? Yeah, I think it makes sense. It's been a long-term trend. If you look back really 15 years, particularly following uh, the GFC, uh, banks have withdrawn uh, levered lending. So private credit has been been growing alongside that um, and filling the void. You've also seen the rise in private equity substantially over the last decade. And a lot of private credit supports the private uh, equity. Exactly. Industry. They kind of are flip sides. The private equity has gone from maybe two trillion to four or four and a half trillion or something like that. Um, but critics are now saying this entire business model is predicated on cheap debt. And we don't have that anymore. And at least year to date, a lot of people benefited from the rise in, in those leveraged loan floating rate debt that you, bet, you mentioned, but you wonder if you look into next year, if there's going to be a lot more pressure on companies, portfolio companies, a lot more defaults and problems like that. Yeah, it's a good question. I, I would separate sort of what we're seeing over the course of this year, what I'll call current loans. And, and actually, we, we see great opportunity there. If you think about the rise in base rates, that's giving first lien secured loans 11 to 12 percent uh, yields. You're also seeing in these new deals equity contributions coming in of 50, 60 percent. So a lot of downside protection supporting it. You also see uh, some of the higher quality businesses are what uh, are coming to market, uh, certainly over the past year. So we feel very comfortable with the quality of loans that uh, are being issued, particularly you, this year. Do you think that there's an overconcentration in uh, software as a service types of stocks? Or, you know, if that concentration exists, is it primarily a good thing because those are supposed to be more resilient business models? Or could it be a risk if all of a sudden they all have to grow market share in order to be profitable? And you know, look what's happening with the IPO window. That's kind of shut. Um, maybe you can sell to other private equity, private credit players, but it's a, it's hard to get multiple expansion, which has supported a lot of the returns that we've seen over the past decade when we're in this kind of environment. So, you know, does does that sector in particular help or hurt that cause, do you think? Yeah, I mean, we run a very diversified portfolio across businesses and sectors. We do like software. We have for a while uh, and for a few reasons. First, we look for companies that are robust, uh, that have hundreds of millions uh, of revenue. That revenue is very recurring, tends to be long-term contracts with highly diversified customer bases, and it's usually mission critical. It's very hard to rip out. Uh, so that's one reason. The, the second reason is uh, we like to uh, lend money to sponsors in the, the software space that have deep uh, degrees of experience, uh, that also have levers to manage cash flow. If there is a downturn, they can actually cut off some spending, cut off some growth, wow. and generate cash flow. Interesting. So how are you planning for, you know, the range of outcomes could include that rates stay high or that we go into a recession or maybe both. Um, what are some of the, the kind of uh, return analyses you're running under these different kinds of scenarios? Well, we always look at downside protection. Again, the new deals, I think, are very robust in how they have that downside equity uh, backing it. But if you look back to some of the more uh, older vintage deals, uh, certainly they were underwritten when people didn't expect rates to rise as much. And I think that's an area where you will see some pressure going forward if rates stay elevated. I, I also look at it as an opportunity. Um, there, there, there's increasing demand for what I'll call junior capital or, or credit opportunities that really try and help companies fill that void. And sometimes that's in the form of, of preferred equity or junior debt that offers a payment in kind option, which allows companies uh, really some relief on their cash interest to boost, boost their cash.